Hello, welcome back to the interface. My name's Alex, and today we're looking at the infotainment system on the Honda E MY1. So in this car, it looks very similar on the outside to the Honda HRV, but on the inside, we've got this brand new portrait 15-inch uh, screen with support for things like wireless Apple CarPlay. There's also Android Auto on here. Um, I will put on screen if it is wireless or not. It's a bit hit or miss with uh, some Android Auto systems. Uh, and then also the climate control systems all on the screen as well. Uh, we're also going to look at the driver's display over here. Um, this is very similar to the Honda E as well. Uh, sort of landscape screen with support for different widgets and things. So we'll look at that in a minute as well. So in this video, we're going to go over everything you need to know about the infotainment screen on the Honda E MY1. So first of all, as I said, we've got a 15 inch touchscreen. It's in portrait mode. Uh, unlike some BYD cars, this doesn't actually rotate or anything. There's not enough room, unfortunately, either side. Um, Honda haven't decided to do that. So as I mentioned, we've got three different sections. Uh, these two sections here always stay in, in place. This one is essentially for media. So we've got the CarPlay screen will be up here. Uh, also there's some cameras and different bits uh, and also the satellite navigation. And then the app selectors are here. So we've got all apps. Uh, all the different settings for the car are there. And on the bottom half, uh, Honda have gone against what they usually do um, in terms of really ergonomic, easy to use in, uh, climate control systems. So something like the Honda E, even though that car is a, a technical marvel basically, it's got screens everywhere, that still retained a physical climate control system. Unfortunately, um, Honda have gone down the path of making this all touchscreen, but in a positive note, at least the buttons are quite large and everything's quite easy to get to. Um, so if you're moving along, your hand's bumping along, you are going to be able to press these buttons quite easily. And then there are two physical buttons. Well, there are three, three physical buttons. You've got one for the uh, hazard switch. You've got front heated windscreen and then the rear and also the mirrors as well. And we've got also the gear selectors down here. And there's a wireless charging pad down there as well. So first things first, we've got a really good screen here, really good resolution. Um, so in the middle here, we've got all the selections for the apps. So we've got all apps here. We've got phone, FM, Bluetooth audio, traffic announcements, EV menu, power flow, trip computer, general settings, vehicle settings, USB, DAB, system updates, Wi-Fi hotspot, messages, owner's manual, and I've got clock, app installer. The app installer, because this car does run Android under the skin, you can put APK files on the car, which is quite cool. Uh, navigation, multi-view camera, smartphone connection, and you can search for a nearby fuel station, or in this case, a electric charging station. So we're going to go back to the main screen here, and also we've got uh, audio source. You can turn off the audio system. Got a touch screen for the volume volumes there, uh, home and then back. So home and back, very reminiscent of Android systems. So you do have back buttons with that. So let's look at the phone system first. So we've got phone. Uh, there's no phone connected right now, but we can go to the device list and we can uh, make a new call from there. And we've got some options in there. We can see Bluetooth on. You can set devices to certain priorities. At the moment, there's no phones paired with this because um, I am using my phone to record certain parts of this video. Let's go back a few pages. So we've got FM as well. So FM radio is built in here. Um, you do have to use the separate apps to get between DB, AM and FM. Uh, we've got some settings here as well. So we've got traffic announcement turned off. Uh, AF, which is turned off. So that's the AF function switches to a different frequency on the same network in order to maintain optimum reception. So something along those lines would be BBC Radio 2 or BBC Radio 1 where they have a block of a block of the frequency allocated to them. We've got reg. So that says the system receive a station with the same PI code as previously received. I have no idea what that means, but I will put it on screen what that actually means. Uh, we've got news as well. So this will, uh, when a news broadcast starts, the news broadcast is received immediately regardless of the function mode. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, we'll go back as well. So we've got different uh, frequencies down here. We can press and hold each one to assign a, a channel to it. Uh, we can seek, tune, scan, or station list. Uh, Bluetooth audio, again, I haven't got a phone paired to the car right now. Uh, but same as the phone, we can connect devices, set priority devices, um, and then play music from your phone. Uh, I'm not sure why, do you, well, I'm not sure how many people will be using the Bluetooth audio app, but if you've got a, like an iPod, an old iPod with Bluetooth, you could use definitely use that function if you haven't got Apple CarPlay available. Traffic announcements, that's just on or off, so that's been set to on. So what that essentially would do, if you're not too sure, uh, every time, any time there's a traffic announcement come in from the radio stations near you, I pick up a local one and just immediately switch to it if there's any important broadcasts. Uh, people have found that the radio stations forget to turn the TR, TA off um, on their side, so you do end up just having to change back sometimes. So I've never used that feature myself, but I can see why it's quite useful if you're traveling around quite a bit. Uh, EV menu as well, obviously this being an EV, it's pretty pretty self-explanatory. So you've got non-charging schedule, charging limit settings, charging current settings, pre-journey climate schedule, and then pre-journey climate settings. Let's go through one of these one by one. You've got no non-charging schedule. Uh, so you can see schedule one. You can have the car turn on certain things. So we say on, uh, time period, 
I'm going to say 12 a.m. or 12 p.m. And you can say anywhere and any certain times of day. Different schedules for that. Charge limit settings. So ideally, when using an EV, you don't particularly want to be charging to 100% every single time. It can wear down the battery uh, and cause it to be efficient, inefficient in certain places. But you would want to charge it to 100% if you're doing a big journey. That extra 20% can make a big difference. So day to day, you can say, when I'm at home, uh, I know I'm going to be uh, not moving around that often. Just charge to 80%. Um, and that'd be absolutely fine. So what you can do here is do uh, 80%, that's the limit, and then every time uh, you can just set, you can override this using the Honda Plus app or the Honda My, I think it's My Honda Plus, uh, and you can override this setting if you want to, but generally day-to-day, -day, uh, you can have it just charged to 80%, which is quite good. And if, if you're at home or away, whatever, you can do whatever you want, really. Uh, and then one thing I noted the Honda e MY1, sorry, um, is that every time you achieve the maximum of something, or something's not quite working, there's a lot of beeps. So for example, at the moment, the climate control system is turned off, there's a lot of beeps. Um, and if you achieve the maximum of something, it'll just warn you. So one little annoyance, but it's not too bad. Charging current settings as well. So you can have low the charging current if required due to any charging supply problems. A away setting will return to high after a single charge. Um, I have seen this, so on some charges, you may want to lower the, the current. Again, I've seen this, there aren't any actual figures. It's just low, medium or high. Uh, it would be nice to have actually see some different figures on here, but uh, it is what it is. Pre-journey climate schedules, that's one benefit of an EV or any car with an app, essentially. You can have the car warm up before you get moving. So you can have schedule one and you can say, uh, you want it on departure time and you can repeat it every time you want to, which is pretty good. And then pre-journey climate settings as well. So you can have, this is, this goes hand in hand with the pre-journey climate schedule. And then you can then set the, the temperature. So you can say, uh, come on for 30 minutes, uh, at 22 degrees, get it all nice and toasty for you, and you can have the defrost to work at the same time if you want to. Okay, power flow. So at the moment, the car is turned on, but we're not moving, obviously. Um, but we've got the climate control system turned off. So at the moment, I've got 135 miles of range. Let's turn the climate system on. Let's drop down to 103. Um, bear in mind, this car does not have a heat pump. Um, so the the experience you get in the winter time is going to be pretty poor. Um, yeah, it's going to knock about 30 miles off if you have the fan on. Again, I'm not sure why Honda have not put a heat pump in this car. It's a brand new platform. It's not based on any other vehicle. Um, it's sort of their first electric SUV. I'd, I'd expect them to put a heat pump in, um, but I'll dive more into that topic in the main review of this car, which is linked in the top right -hand corner or in the description down below. So this just essentially tells you where how much battery you've got left. It doesn't tell you how fast the car is charging at public chargers or at home. You have to use an app or something along those lines. The car itself doesn't tell you how fast it's charging. Um, unfortunately, that's, that's a bit of a misstep for this vehicle. Trip computer. So I've reset my trip when I had the car delivered on Wednesday this week. Um, so I've done 79 miles in the car, an average of 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour. And you can have different trips. And there's more data there. So you can see people who've had the car previously, there's an average of uh, 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour, uh, over 1,300 miles. And there's uh, three miles and 3.5 miles, and there's trip B as well. Really, when the, the car has done 1,800 miles, um, and for nearly 1,400 of those, it's done 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour. This car was registered in September time, so uh, mileage may vary when it comes to the summer. But, but again, the car does not have a heat pump, so that might cause you some issues. And then there are some settings in here. So you can have trip A, reset timing, manually reset. Uh, trip B, reset manually again. And you can have these... Uh, when charged or power off, which is quite cool. And you can delete the trip history if you want to. I'm gonna keep the trip history for the journey or the time period I've got this car for, which is one week. Okay, we've got general settings as well. So we've got system. So we're looking here, so we've got date and time. So set date and time, time zone, auto, daylight, saving time, date format. Again, this is pretty standard Honda stuff. The Honda Jazz I reviewed recently had a lot of these similar settings. Uh, it's really good to see there's a lot of customization with the time zone. So we can have set date and time. Again, it's set to automatic. I'm not sure why you want it on anything else. Uh, automatic time zone again so it picks up from gps where you are uh, and then date format again that's the british format time zone or time format sorry 12 hour which is what i personally prefer uh language as well so we've got lots of languages in here it's got english danish uh, it's japanese and stuff in there uh, let's get back a page uh, touch panel sensitivity is normal you can set that to high or if you want to not much difference between those those two i find uh system volumes so you can have system sounds text speed navigation guidance ringtone all various settings in there, really nice and customizable. Uh, location, vehicle data sharing, that's currently turned off. I'm gonna leave that turned off for now as well. I've got about, uh, this is where you find out it's running Android 8, uh, different versions in there. I've got status, it's an IP address, Mac address, uptime. Uh, again, it's a pretty standard 
Honda stuff. It tells you what build of Android it's running. Uh, it says uh, Monday, January 23rd, 2023, is when it was, I guess, uh, built, the, the system. Uh, some legal information there as well, different licenses for Android. Um, let's go down to factory data reset, so you can reset the entire car. Typically, when I get a press car in, I just factory reset the entire car before it goes back off, so there's no locations or anything uh, dodgy left in there. And then we've got detailed information as well, app manager. This is where it starts to look like Android, so if you use Android, you'll notice that this is very similar. Um, it's got show system if you want to, so you've got different apps in here. So there's sort of Android Easter eggs, um, which is interesting. <laughs> So you do four stop certain bits and pieces in there. You can do shared library systems, uh, app lists. You can, if something's not performing quite as you wanted to, I guess you can um, force quit some applications. You can see it's Panasonic Automotive. So a lot of the tech behind this car is Panasonic, because Panasonic modem, modems in here, um, different custom apps that they've put in here. So it's quite cool to sort of see how the car works and what's going on under the hood. That's pretty much it for the system. Um, let's go back to smartphone connection. So I've got no cars, I've got no phones connected to the car currently. I've got Android Auto, so you can see no Android Auto devices registered. Apple CarPlay as well, so you've got connect new device, got my phone there. I've got to go back a page. So we've got connections, we've got Wi Fi, we can connect the car to a Wi Fi hotspot if we want to. Uh, so we can set up a uh, Wi Fi SSID on there, and we can get updates from the car. I've uh, got Bluetooth as well, so you we can connect new devices. A lot of options to connect this car to different Bluetooth devices. Uh, display. So we can set the brightness of the, of the display. Again, it's done that uh, warning to show that we're on the highest setting. Uh, we can turn it up and down. And then got contrast. And also once that disappears, we've got the black levels as well. And I've got sound. So a lot of settings in here. It's got bass treble, um, everything set to the default settings. So when I got the car, I did find that someone set it all the way to a treble and it sounded like absolute, it sounded awful. Uh, I've got mid range, bass. Uh, I've got balance fader, so we can set where the central of the car is going to be, or the central of the sound is going to be. So we've got the driver, uh, passengers in the rear as well. Speed volume compensation, again, this will just um, compensate the, the amount of volume you get uh, based on how fast you're going. Not a massive issue in an EV, because EVs are quite quiet. This one's uh, on the slight edge of being a little bit noisy, uh, so that might be quite useful for you. Um, also, we've got camera, so settings for the camera, so multi-view camera, guidelines, you can set where the guides are going to be on the on the viewfinder, cross traffic monitor as well, so that will say show arrows on the rear camera image to indicate vehicles approaching from other sides. So if you're reversing, it will show you where the, where the cars are coming from, which is pretty handy. And then lastly, in the vehicle settings, we've got uh, voice control, so voice control mode, normal, uh, yeah, it's pretty standard stuff in there. So let's go to vehicle settings. So actually we were in general settings just now. We've got vehicle settings. Again, pretty standard Honda stuff. It's got a deflation warning system. Uh, calibrates the TPMS system, so that's pretty good. I've got a driver assistance setup as well. So preceding vehicle proximity warning distance is all normal. Um, so that'll be when you're uh, coming towards sort of road collision alerts. Automatic cruise control vehicle ahead detected beep. That's currently turned off. Uh, road departure mitigation settings, delayed, so you can set that to early, normal, or delayed if you want to. Uh, lane keep assist beep, that's currently turned off, so the LKAS set alert for not detecting road lines. Uh, got blind spot information as well, so audible and visual, uh, visual alert only if you want to. That's pretty useful. Uh, traffic sign recognition system display, so it's display only, or if you want none, so that'll be on here. I'm gonna turn that off actually. I have found on this car, I will mention it more in the main video, uh, it's a little bit inaccurate of what it finds. So I noticed going to certain 20 zones, it may have picked up that it's a 30 zone or vice versa, and then going onto a motorway as well. I do find that, um, or dual carriageway, sorry, I do find when you've got the white circle with the black line, um, that the car doesn't really know what that means in a different context. So you may be going onto a motorway, it sees the unrestricted sign, and then it may just pick up that it's a 60, and it's gonna completely whinge at you every time and beep and flash and things and distract you, even though you know you're not going in the speed limit, or you're going, you are going the speed limit, sorry. Um, so I do find that a, little, a bit annoying. I have found better systems. So I think the Honda E, weirdly, had a better uh, traffic sign recognition system, um, but it, it just happens, um, unfortunately. Um, it's just how they implement the software. So you can turn it off and not, I will put on screen if that comes back on every time, because that's one thing with certain vehicles at the moment, it may come back on every time, uh, which, is not, which is quite annoying. 
Let's get to the apply parking brake after Honda. Apply, <laughs> apply parking brake after Honda Parking Pilot. So there's a button down here for the Honda Parking Pilot, and that will, uh, once it's finished parking itself for you, you can have the parking brake come on by itself, which is good. And then Honda Parking Pilot Space Detected B. Try saying Honda Parking Pilot uh, three or four times in a row. Uh, you'll definitely have your tongue twisted. Um, and that's, you can turn it on or off as well. Okie doke, uh, we've got meter setup as well. So that's the settings for this screen here. We've got warning messages, got those turned off currently. Uh, got outside temperature display, so you can adjust the uh, compensation, either minus or plus degrees. Um, I never understand why you'd want certain things to be adjusted that way. Um, but yeah, the option is there. Uh, trip A reset timing, so manual reset. Uh, again, uh, we've got the trip settings and you can manually reset those different, basically same settings, different place. Uh, alarm body control, mid or medium. You can set that if you want to. Uh, reverse position alert tone, that's on or off. Turn by turn display, so I, that's really good on this vehicle. Regardless of using the navigation system or the Apple CarPlay system, there's gonna be turn by turn display information like this displayed there, which is fantastic. Uh, speed distance units, so you can have miles per hour or kilometers an hour. Again, useful if you're going to France or Germany um, from the UK, which is really good. And then rear seat reminder. So if you don't have children, you're just carrying stuff in the back and uh, enough weight, um, it's going to pop up and say, don't forget you've left something in the back. I'm going to turn it off because I don't carry anything in the back of the car. A little delay there, but anyway, let's go back a page. Got lighting setup, uh, pretty standard stuff to auto high beam. Uh, this works really well. Uh, I found that with the Genesis as well. Uh, as well as the Honda E as well, that the auto high beam on some cars now is working really, really, really well. Um, so that's turned on currently. Uh, interior light dimmer duration, 30 seconds, 60 or 15 seconds. Uh, headlight auto off timer, so 15 seconds, 60 or 30. So that selects the length of time the exterior lights stay on after you close the driver's door. Great. Uh, we've got instrument illumination sensitivity, so mid, max or high. Um, it's currently set to, oh, we've got low, min, max, high, and medium. So uh, it's currently set to auto, I believe. Um, there are some settings. I think this button here, yes, this button here controls the brightness of the display there. Let's go back. Headlight integration with wipers. So it says selects on or off the headlight function and wiper operation when the headlight is in auto setting. Great. And then lastly, in this page, oh, we've got one more thing after that, actually. Uh, driver or door window setup. So keyless lock notification, that's on or off currently. Um, so it turns, it says it flushes the exterior lights when the doors are locked. That's useful to let you know that you've locked them if you can't hear the locks uh, change. Auto folding door mirror. So if you don't want the white, the mirrors to fold in every time, you can just turn that off if you want to. But I personally quite like that. And then remote window control as well. So when this setting is enabled, the keyless remote can be used to roll down all windows and open the sunroof by pressing the unlock button and then within 10 seconds, pressing and holding the unlock button a second time. Um, so you can have that on or off. That's currently turned on. Uh, win, and then, yeah, go back a page. Lastly, in the vehicle settings, I've got power tailgate setup. So it says keyless open mode anytime. So it says changes the keyless setting for when the power tailgate opens. So it says changes the keyless setting for when the power tailgate opens. I've got anytime or when unlocked. Power open by outer handle, it says on, you can turn it off. And then hands-free access, uh, you can just wave your foot around the bottom of the boot and it will open the uh, tailgate if you wanted to. Okay, let's go back to this main screen. We've got USB, so there are some USB ports down there. There's one C and one A, and you can connect a USB device to that, either a, a USB drive with some MP3s on it, and you can play music from that or podcasts or different audio files. Okay, we've got DAB as well, so separate app to the FM and the AM apps. Uh, you can just select the different radio stations you want to listen to. It's got settings. And um, we can have DAB to DAB link. Selects whether the system automatically searches for the same station from ensembles and switches to it. I'd imagine what that means is, uh, so say for example, Smooth FM, uh, Smooth UK, uh, they've got different regional radio stations. So you can, if you're navigating the country and you want localized things where you're going to, um, in theory, I think what that means is you'll be able to switch between those different various ones rather than selecting the national one. That's going to be turned on currently. DAB to FM. So as we're transitioning transitioning from FM to DAB, you may find that certain areas might not have as good DAB service. Um, so you can have it linked between the two. Um, that's, that's a pretty good feature. That's quite useful sometimes, especially with cars with quite poor uh, DAB aerials on them. This one's pretty good um, so far. 
Uh, scan mode, ensemble, uh, it says strongest stations on the selected band for 10 seconds. That could be ensemble. Uh, traffic information is turned off, other information as well. What does this mean? So uh, warning, news and weather. I'm gonna turn that on, I think. And then slideshow as well. So uh, it's different slideshows for different radio stations. So it's pretty good in there. Let's go back. And also we've got, yeah, we've got the radio stations here. We can select and hold those to mark them as favorites if we want to. Ensemble service, scan ensemble list. System updates, so this card does have Wi-Fi, so we can connect it to a Wi-Fi network if we want to, um, but we're gonna use, uh, yeah, we, can, we can either, for a system update, we can have a formatted USB drive with eight, eight gigabytes of free space um, to download a software update for the car, um, if there's an update available for it. Uh, Wi-Fi hotspot, again, you can connect uh, a phone to the Wi-Fi on the car, and you can get you can share that network if you want to as well. That's okay, messages. So this is a this is if the car had a SIM card connected. Doesn't currently have one, I don't believe. Um, but yeah, the only messages will display there. So we've got an owner's manual. Again, all Honda vehicles I've discovered this year or last year as well, um, they've always had a digital owner's manual. Uh, I think there is one in the glove box, quite a hefty manual. But if you're if you left it behind or you don't have one or it's a rental car or whatever, um, and something's gone wrong with the car, you can search for things in the manual. And this is a really really good option. Uh, I'm glad that they've done that because not many cars are having this feature now. Next page, uh, we've got clock, so just change this. You've got the Honda robot here, which is quite cool, uh, and the clock's just there if you want it to be. Uh, you've got app installer, so you can install manual APK files on the root Android system of the vehicle, which is pretty cool. Um, navigation, so let's have a look in there. It's going to blow off some of my location as well, um, but there is a navigate built-in navigation system on the Honda EMY1. Uh, personally, I prefer Apple CarPlay, but that option is there if you want it. Multi-view camera as well, so we've got uh, different cameras around the car, so we've got one facing forward, we can also select the one on the sides as well, pretty pretty good feature there, um, quite nice that they've got that available. And then we've got smartphone connections, so uh, connect, connect, connect devices that way, and then search for different stations, so that's the uh, charging stations, again this car doesn't have uh, a SIM card built in, so we can't actually see any stations near us. Okay, that's this main section here. Up here we've got uh, where, where the car player would be. Uh, there's nothing when you swipe down or swipe to the right. Uh, we've got different shortcuts to different things. So it says the range quite visibly there for you. Uh, we've got display mode so we can change the brightness of this display as well. Put in our shortcut to get to that. Uh, clock, multi-view camera, connect to smartphone, navigation, and then back as well. So we can, there's some different shortcuts in there which is quite nice. And then down here, as I mentioned, we've got audio source, turn the audio on and off, volume, home, back. And then the climate control settings are down here. So uh, as I said, we've got two physical buttons, one for the heated windscreen, one for the uh, rear view, uh, one for the rear windscreen, and then one for the mirrors. And then there are some physical buttons here. So, it, well, digital buttons here, but they're always, in, they're always gonna stay where they are. Uh, heated seats, so we've got heated seats for the passenger and the driver, three stage. Those are pretty good and pretty quick to warm up as well. So pretty nice there. Uh, auto for the air conditioning, on and off. So turn it on, you can see instantly we've lost 30 miles of range. Again, no heat pump on the EMY1. Uh, we've got settings for this, we've got heated eco mode. I'm not sure, when eco mode is active, heated eco mode will adjust the cabin temperature with seat heaters automatically turned on according to the interior next to a temperature of the vehicle. Okay, that's, that's turned on. Uh, got recirculation turned on as well. I might save some energy, I'm not too sure. And then we've got the fan speed and different things, and we can set where the temperature is going to, where the, the fan is going to. And then there are some little dials here to adjust the each particular side manually. Interesting little implementation there. I've not seen this quite a thing before, but that's pretty nice. That's pretty much it for the infotainment screen. Uh, we're now gonna look at the driver's display as well. So we're now just looking at the uh, driver's display on the Honda EMY1. Uh, so we've got the current gear you're in here. Uh, there's a speed traffic notification up there. The current speed you're doing. Got a picture of the car. Again, Hondas have got uh, that visual representation of what the lights on the car are doing, which is really nice. Uh, got the current mileage on the car, so it's 1,835 miles. Current temperature outside, it's pretty chilly today, uh, eight degrees. Uh, and this will this bar here will change, sort of adapt every time you're moving. This is the efficiency of the vehicle. So the average over 79 miles has been 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour. And there are different, different modes you can go through there. So if I put the wheel up, this one's trip B. So 1300 miles, 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour. And then they've got the trip A back again there. And you can push the button in to reset the trip. 
uh, and we've got the uh, battery status here, so 67% battery, 136 miles of range with the heating system turned off, uh, status for the lights, and this is like a power charge meter, so this will um, change up and down whenever you're moving around and got into regen as well. So on the steering wheel, there's some buttons here. So we've got the volume up and down here. We've got a wheel here to control this this side of the screen, so the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, tracks and different things there. We've got voice control and we've got a paddle. Uh, there's a paddle there, just there for the regen. This side is for the cruise control. So we've got the uh, on button for the cruise control there. We've got the uh, distance between different vehicles, so the vehicle in front of you. And we've got the automatic steering. I have found on Honda vehicles that the automatic steering feature and all the cruise control settings are really, really, really good. I also got a heated steering wheel as well. And then we've got the res plus and then set minus and then the cancel button. And then there's a plus button, a plus paddle there for the, uh, the regen system. Uh, what you can do here is, so what I'm gonna do here is press on the buttons. So uh, if we look on the left hand side here, we've got the widgets this side. So if we press the home button, we can now see the energy, the instrument display settings. We can go through each one we want to. So we've got information here. So we've got no current information. Uh, we've got uh, no content on that one. Got safety support, seat belts, driver retention, uh, speed alarm, navigation. So this side will be the turn by turn uh, directions, whether you're using Apple CarPlay or the uh, navigation system built into the Honda EMY1. We've got phone calls, audio, uh, speed and time, uh, energy. So click on this one. And that's the, the efficiency we're just looking at. Uh, and there's some different bits and pieces in here so we can go through and turn on different things we want to. Uh, and there's also, if we go back, this is a back, back button there, information, and then we have nothing displayed on it. I quite like having the efficiency, so the energy of the vehicle, and then when I've got a, a satellite navigation system running, I can have uh, the turn by turn directions will come up by themselves when a, when a junction is approaching. Okay, thanks for watching this video about the Honda EMY1 infotainment system. If you want to learn more about the interface, have a look at our website, theinterface.uk. We've got more car news and car content coming very soon. We've got a full review of the Honda EMY1 coming very soon to the channel. Link is in the top right hand corner and the description down below. Again, thanks for watching. My name's Alex and we'll see you again next time.